Hi, I'm Matt and welcome to Tech Tested. Today we're going to be doing some extreme overclocking on one of the most legendary CPUs ever, the Q6600. Now the Q6600 needs no introduction. Everyone knows what it is, and even our video editor Josh used it in his daily computer years ago for quite some time. Now I wanna go over some of the system specs for the more extreme overclocking oriented people, such as the motherboard and the RAM. For the motherboard, we have an Asus, I think it's P5K, 64WS Evolution, which is a X48 chipset, and we are using two sticks of Kingston HyperX DDR3 memory. Now what makes them special is they are hypers. Those of you who are in the know on the extreme overclocking lingo means that refers to the IC on the stick of RAM. Basically, it's a very special Alpita base IC that does very well with overclocking on 775 and AM3. Now my output device is a little bit of overkill. It's the R9 290 uh, Sapphire, I forget what model that is. But the reason I need to use this is because we are running through a capture card. So I need something that is strong enough to do a 1080p output all the way through the capture card without installing drivers. There are better options than this, but it's what I had and it does look really good. Now there are several reasons I am overclocking this particular CPU. One, I submitted a score on hardware bot that was invalid. Instead of having the memory tab for CPU Z open, I had the main board tab. So I need to try and rerun and get a better score. That is on SuperPi 32 million. But I also figured everyone on YouTube loves Cinebench R15. And so we are gonna probably start with that and see how well we can do. But we do need to get a baseline on that benchmark before we do anything else. So without further ado, I'm gonna start pouring liquid nitrogen so we can keep the CPU cool and we're gonna get a baseline run in Cinebench. Now something I should probably mention on this CPU, unlike extreme overclocking we've done in the past, this one does not full pot, which means I actually have to monitor the temperatures and make sure it doesn't get too cold. Fortunately, it does get quite close. It'll go down to like minus 170 degrees Celsius without cold bugging. So we're not gonna have too much of an issue, but I do have to be careful not to go full pot on this one. Right now, we're just gonna do Cinebench R15. And we're going to, you know, we're gonna do some extreme overclocking stuff. We're actually gonna set priority to high. Slight technical difficulties, but we are getting back up and running. We're gonna run Cinebench R15 and see what kind of score we get. So hopefully everything goes smoothly. And in the meantime, I'm gonna be pulling down. This is gonna take a hot minute. <laughs> I forgot how slow this was on these old processors. Fortunately, we're gonna like almost double the speed of this. So hopefully it'll go almost twice as fast. I think the record is like 502 on the score. So we'll see if we can reach anywhere near that. Um, I'd like to be in the top 10 people on hardware bot. I know this chip is good. It's not first place good. We're gonna still push as hard as we can. Our temperature is now down to minus 50 and we are rounding the corner any second now. And we're at 240. So, okay, our goal is to double the 240. So we can theoretically expect to double our performance, hopefully, maybe. Uh, P5E64 WS Evolution. That was the model of the motherboard. <clears throat> and then last thing we're gonna do, this is probably the most important thing you do when you're extreme overclocking, save a profile. So we're just gonna save to profile one, hit okay, escape. And that way, if we screwed something up, we can come back and fix it without having to redo everything we just did. And there, we're at least posting so far. So let's go over here to CPU-Z and see what we're running at. 
Now there's a chance we're a little bit unstable and I wish I had set FSB installed on this OS. So why are we only at 3.8? No, that's not right. Is it 520 FSB that I should be able to get? I'm way low, way low. I should be closer to 4.8. Yes, I should be at 520 FSB, not 420. All right, 520. All right, hopefully this works. We're now pushing it to 4.6 gigahertz. So we're booting into Windows. The RAM is running at like 1736 megahertz, I think. We're running at 520 FSB. The CPU should be running a little bit over 5.6, which is pretty dang fast. So let's go over to CPU Z. And our processor is running at minus 143 degrees Celsius, which is just fine. So yeah, 4.68, almost 4.7 gigahertz. So let's close out a CPU Z and see if we can get a Cinebench run in at almost 4.7. I'm gonna do my best to avoid looking up the charts and seeing what the records are. See this, we're running just fine so far, so I really wish I had set FSB installed because instead of rebooting every time to change the FSB, I could just do it in the operating system. But because I'm an idiot and didn't think about it, actually, I think I've got it on a flash drive. This is going so much faster. I barely had time to get my flash drive pulled out and. We're already uh, most of the way done. So we were at 420, wait, what was our score before? 240, it was at 240 before. And uh, so we're gonna see if we can get double that. Why don't we, 480, let's make 480 our goal and anything higher than that is gravy. 467, okay, we need 13 points. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some of the old overclocking tricks. We're gonna install set FSB. Okay, now I've got to remember the right FSB, which is not going to be easy. Shoot. I guess we're going to be doing it in BIOS. We'll be right back. <laughs> All right, back in Windows. Let's check our CPU frequency. We went up to 525 FSB, and we're at 4.725 gigahertz. So uh, we're going to try a couple tricks. We're going to get a run-in in Cinebench at a uh, high priority. And if it passes at high priority, we're gonna do high priority with off-screen rendering. Holy cow, okay, it's running. I'm a little surprised. I thought it would crash. And it's just overflowing like a volcano. Which, by the way, if you wanna get into extreme overclocking, Elmore Labs just released their Volcano CPU pot, and I think it's $250 right now, and it's an amazing pot, and $250 for a pot is actually a really good price. It's actually a really good time to get into this hobby. It's a great pot, great price. You can do stuff like this. Run your Q6600 at over 4.7 gigahertz. Shout out to Elmore for all that. He's got, an, he's got a bunch of other amazing products. The Extreme Overclocking uh, community is well behind him and only person to ever reach nine gigahertz on a CPU. So that's pretty cool too. 479, okay, we're gonna reach 480. Oh my gosh, look how close we are. Okay, we're gonna redo it. We're about to go for our 480 point run. That will be double the speed of the Q6600 at stock clocks. So we are like running, what would that be? Well, it'd be like two Q6600s. It would be really cool. So we're about to hit run. The thing about off-screen rendering is you kind of have to wait till the run's done. And if it crashes, you're gonna be sitting there twiddling your thumbs, wondering what on earth is going on. So hopefully everything goes well. And maybe if this goes fine, we'll try to get even faster. There it is, we got 481. Oh no. No, we crashed. We got 481 and we crashed. Okay, that means we have to restart. We're going to, I can't believe it. All right, we got 481. We need to retry here. Oh my gosh, so close. It did crash, like it wasn't doing anything on that monitor, right? Okay, yeah. Well, that's off-screen rendering. So off-screen rendering is when you render Cinebench 
but you do it off screen. That does impact performance. So 527, let's try 527 because didn't we get 479 in on-screen rendering? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I did save that, right? 527. All right, this is probably not going to work, but we do things that probably aren't going to work all the time when we're extreme overclocking. Okay, we're going to try to hit 480 on on-screen rendering. Run. Oh, I don't even know what temperature we're running at. We're empty. We're empty! Backup flask. <laughs> Come on, get me 480. No! He crashed. Wait, no, we didn't. 481. Okay, we gotta get CPU Z tabs open. Let me get this screenshot. And let me do it right. Let's not screw it up. Okay. CPU Z. Yes! 481. All right. Since we are already in Windows, let's go ahead and try to run our 11.5 Z-Tab. And we're running at 4.743 gigahertz, apparently. Um, oh gosh, we're getting warm, 115 degrees. And I just dumped it all in there. I'm not gonna change priority. So something I've noticed about our 11.5 is it hits really hard at the beginning of the test. So I'm just gonna do regular priority, nothing fancy. Come on, quick run. There we go. Okay, so we're stable in our 11.5, which is better than I expected. I expected us to not do that well in our 11.5. All right, we're rounding the corner. Let's see what she does. 519, I don't know if that's good. We didn't do a previous run with this. Maybe I should just look it up. Hold on one second. I happen to have the internets right here. Oh, wow. We are not close to the top. But we're not that far out of the top. So 519 puts us... I need to save this. Because 519 puts us in, like, 12th place. Which is not great. But it's not bad either. Better than I expected. I'm also curious what 480 does for our... Uh, our 15 score. Since we're here, I'm gonna see how we did. We got a 519, which puts us in 12th place for our 11.5. For our 15, we got 481, I think. And, oh, wait a minute, we may have to go faster. That puts us in sixth in the world it ties us for fifth. We got to go a little bit faster. Okay. I just decided things are not done. <laughs> How much time do we have left on the camera? You know what? Maybe we should just crank more voltage and higher FSB. 530. We're going to crank the core voltage up to 1.9. This is going better than I expected. If I was actually trying really hard, like this is a bit casual for me. If I was dialing in every minute thing, I had my operating system set up perfectly, we might be able to get in top four, top three. Uh, now that I say that, I'm curious what that was. Top four, 484 would be top four. Then it jumps to 492. So I don't think we're gonna get top three, and I'm not sure I could get top three, but we might get top four. Oh no. They crashed. Maybe we won't get top four. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we should call it. All right, we're actually gonna call it for today. This thing did amazing. We doubled the speed of the Q6600 in Cinebench. And I don't know if it was double the speed in R15, but we got some amazing scores out of this thing today. And if we had a little bit more time, we could probably push it a little bit farther. But in lieu of that, I'm really happy with my results. I hope you guys enjoyed watching us overclock the Q6600. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Follow us on our social media platforms. Don't check out our merch store right now. I mean, you can, it's not there. We're gonna get it back up and going. 
Make sure to check out the XOC podcast where I interview some extreme overclockers and get their opinions on various topics. And we will see you all in the next one. And cheers. cheers.